lot of the times, these models, they are criticized by essentially being stochastic parrot. What do I mean by that? Well, stochastic refers to the kind of probabilistic nature. Uh, there's a there's some randomness to them. Uh, and, you know, based on the probability, uh, you know, you can, uh, they, they, will, uh, they, they will generate, right, the, the answers or the text. Well, parrots need no explanation. Like, the, the criticism is that, in a way, they are not really creating anything new. They are kind of repeating the stuff that they learn. Again, the patterns from the text. Is there any validity to this criticism, to calling them stochastic parrots? It might take a little bit, not that much anymore. In the past, when they are not very, very good, they made a lot of mistakes. Um, but uh, nowadays, they're a lot more sophisticated, as we've seen. But the essence of their idea kind of remains, right? They are kind of like, they look at patterns, they repeat the patterns, there's some, probabilis uh, some probability to them. Okay, so that is to say in a more technical language that their output, what they generate, is determined by which words are most likely, again, the probability, uh, to appear in the upcoming sequences. So they are, so they are kind of like next word next word predictions, but very sophisticated that it becomes next paragraph, next article prediction, right? Um, but because it's based on probability, they can also output stuff that is plausible sounding, but incorrect, yeah? So they can give you the false information. Uh, this phenomenon is called uh, hallucination, okay? Bear that in mind. You cannot use ChatGPT or whatever to just like, okay, I'm going to do research now and just like follow blindly whatever the output is. You're going to make mistakes. There are cases already of this happening out there. There was a lawyer, for instance, that referenced a lot of cases that didn't exist because he used uh, ChatGPT uh, for his own research, his own work, and then the judge wasn't happy at all because, again, those cases didn't exist. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Um, so there is also uh, Bing Chat, which, uh, uh, as probably most of you know, Microsoft, you know, has a has a lot of stake on OpenAI. So they are using OpenAI's models in uh, in their own systems, like Bing, and uh, so Bing has Bing Chat. If you have Microsoft computers, you have Microsoft Edge. There's like uh, Copilot which already links whatever is on, on the page, on the web, and then you can just chat and talk and ask for things, uh, and then it will reach out to the web, which is pretty cool, can give you sources, can help with stuff like this. Um, Ashim is asking me, are there free models? Yes, there are a lot of open source models. Um, let me uh, let me put here in the chat, uh, look, look up Hugging Face. Uh, it's a big platform for, of open models. Facebook or Beta, um, in this space, they're very, very cool because they do open source a lot of their, a, a lot of their models. Uh, so it's a lot of cool stuff there, like Llama, for instance, uh, that they outsource. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, and there's also mentioned, there was a really funny story about GPT creating a fake, a New York Times article that was so on brand to the writer that they didn't know if it was fake. Spent a week's trying to find an ar archive copy. Yeah. See, there's like, um, yeah, this, this is big. There And also there's going to be a lot of like pushback. There's a lot of uh, regulations trying to catch up, even companies trying to figure out how to deal with this. Uh, my take uh, is always use these tools as if they are knowledgeable, you know, people and experts. And as people, they can make mistakes. Yes. So always have that a little bit, that skepticism, uh, if it's in, but your work is important, refer back to more traditional ways to ensure the information is accurate, right? Do your research, find good sources, all of that. Go back to old school Google <laughs> for all of that. 